just joining now. So as soon as he's in. Hello, Jack. Yes, bro. He's saying you joined up quick, man. Yeah, I was ready. I was late. You're sharp. Still in shot. <laughs> we'll give it a couple seconds, let some people join up and all of that. So, yeah, man. How how you been? Yeah, not bad. Um, it's a bit difficult at the minute. Uh, don't really know what's going on football-wise, but I've been all right. Just trying to stay fit. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Cool, man. So, what I'd say, we'll start and obviously people will join as it as it goes on. So, they'll, they'll catch whatever bits they catch. But, yeah, man. Um, just give a little brief introduction, your name, who you play for and uh, maybe the area you come from. Originally. Uh, my name is Ajibola Elise. I'm 19. I play for West Ham. Uh, I'm a centre back and I'm from Essex. Okay. Yeah, so, bro. Tell us what it was like growing up, so growing up in Essex and maybe your first kind of memories of playing football. Um, first memories of playing football, there was a leisure centre that's like five minutes from my house that my nan used to take me to. We used okay. to play towards there. That's the earliest thing I can remember, maybe like four or five years old. Nice, nice. And what age did you start maybe playing your, your first like games for a grassroots team? Uh, first grassroots team was Romford Borough. I think that was about six years old. Um, joined them, was with them for like a year. Then moved on to another team called uh, Romford Royals. Okay. After playing against Romford Royals. Are you saying they, they wanted your signature? Yeah, basically. <laughs> so I remember we... All right, cool. So, um, talk us through what age you maybe got signed and, and that process of how it all started for you in terms of the trial period and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, I was playing for Romford Royals and then, you know them like Saturday tournaments? Yeah, yeah. I started like nine in the morning and ended like four. We were playing one of them and then got scouted by a scout from West Ham. <clears throat> um, went to a trial at Beckton, the big Astro at Beckton, uh, on like Saturday morning, just played and then Next thing I did, like, they're offering a contract. This okay, was, like, so, under eight. Okay, so you didn't really have that sort of six-week trial period. It was more of just played in this game and then they kind of offered uh, a contract after. But, yeah, all right, you're at West Ham now and you're eight, you said? So... Uh, Obviously, you stayed at West Ham up until now, so you, you've been there 11 years. Maybe talk us through how it started and, and how it felt when you first signed. Um, first signing was the best thing ever. Like, I remember there was a few teams that wanted me because, you know, when you're under nines, like, there are loads of scouts floating about. Yeah, you can, you can go to different places and, yeah. and you, you're, you're all right. So there was a few teams and I ended up signing for West Ham because they were the closest. Okay. So... Um, if I had a choice, I probably wouldn't have signed for them, but my dad was like, it's the closest one, that's where you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I ended up playing there. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't say I was, like, the best player or anything like that. I kind of, like, kind of, like, average, just floated about, stayed through the years and then just, like, gradually progressed. Um, uh, can I ask you this? Uh, when you signed for West Ham, did you start as a centre-back? Because, obviously, a lot of people that I spoke to, they don't usually start in the position they finish or are currently. Um, yeah, so when I joined West Ham, I was a defender, but at my Sunday team before, I was a striker, so... Okay, so they kind of converted you on the, on the journey? Kind of. It was like last few months of my Sunday team and then beginning of okay. West Ham. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah, the first, first feeling was, was excitement and, and, like you said, you wasn't, you wasn't always the best in the team, but you, you managed to stay throughout. Uh, what was it like leading up to maybe the later years where you started to get your scholar and from maybe under 14s to under 16s? Uh, maybe maybe talk about some of the highs and lows you might have experienced during that time. Uh, lows, definitely injuries. Quite a few of them. You had quite a few injuries. Yeah. Um, under 15s, I did my the medial uh, part of my knee. I was out for 10 months with that. Uh, Beginning and how, how how was I know a lot, I I know personally a lot of people that's been injured and obviously the time out psychologically it can it can get to you how how did you deal with that obviously being so young and having a big injury honestly it's so difficult like you're just going in doing gym like doing the same thing every day it's, it's the worst it's the worst thing but 
you just have to like I don't even, I don't even know what to say. You just have to like get through it basically because you know yeah, that yeah. there's a bright side at the end of the tunnel. And how how did it feel as well that knowing that after ten months out, West Ham still stuck by you? And do you know what I mean? Because a lot of people, you know, sometimes you get injuries and then the club kind of releases you and says, look, we want to part ways. But obviously them sticking by you was, was a big thing. Yeah, it's true. Um, I think I'd already been offered a scholar at the time, so. Okay. So, so it, of... wasn't, it wasn't too bad, yeah. Yeah, all right. So, again, you're getting to that age now where the scholars come in um, and, yeah, you've, you've been offered your scholar. How was that feeling? Sure, that was great. Um when I got offered the scholar, I got offered the pro as well. Okay. Nice. So it was kind of like two and one. So that was that was good, yeah. Yeah, no, that's sick, man. So um, again, obviously at under sixteen, I know that you played for for England. Uh, how was that feeling and getting the call up for them? That was amazing. Um, I made my England debut under fifteen. Okay. So I was actually captain of the first game. So that was even like ten times felt. Um, yeah, so I made my debut fifteen. Got injured that game. I was out for ten months. Came back and then like slowly got back into the team. So yeah, yeah, no, that's sick as well. So uh, how how how's it felt to represent England? Because obviously you've done it at um, 16, 17, 18, and nineteen. So yeah, um, everyone says it's on, like everyone says it's an honour, but it actually is because you know that there's several other players that would die to be in the position. So. Yeah. I'm great for it, really. And and how's the standard? Um, obviously, playing at West Ham, but when you go away with England, is the standard a lot higher, or is it is it is it copable? And and everyone's really in and around the same level. Um, I'd say everyone's around the same level, but when you do go England, you can tell that slight difference. Just like the tempo is quicker, everything's sharper, ball moves quicker. They're top yeah. top players in England, yeah. No, definitely. All right, cool. So, yes, uh, scholar years, you're, you're at West Ham, you've played England a couple of times uh, and you got offered your pro quite early. So, how was that feeling uh, knowing that you're kind of secure and you've got a pro? Well, uh, to be honest, I can't remember how I was feeling, but knowing me, I would have just been like, it's just time to keep working hard and push on from here. Yeah, so... It's just the beginning, it's just the first contract in it, so... So yeah, you you signed your pro and like this year, I know that you've gone out on loan. Uh, what was the thinking behind that? Because obviously you're still quite young, so mm. you could have maybe done a couple more years in the 23s. But what kind of inspired you to go out and just say, I want to play some first team football? I was just thinking, beginning of the season, went uh, pre season tour with the, with the 23s, did well, started the season with the 23s, and wasn't really training with the first team. And I was thinking if an opportunity comes to like test myself at first team level then I would take it so I was just waiting waiting there was a few like offers here and there that you hear and then Accrington came in and then I was like yeah I want to go and and what's what's it been like being down or up there um playing and yeah doing doing everything you've done so far because obviously you've played like, how many games have you played this season uh 15 so yeah, what's that? What's that experience been like getting that first team football in? At first, so difficult because like obviously I had to move away from home, four and a half hours away, living by myself for the first time, driving like fifteen miles to training every day when I'm used to just a five minute trip. Yeah. On the pitch, like the quality's there, so I guess that wasn't too difficult. But off the pitch and like trying to get in the team and stuff like that and handling yourself in the first team environment is the more difficult stuff, which I guess yeah. I like coped with and learned from, but at first that was difficult. And yeah, when you got there, was there any of the f current first team players that kind of guided you and helped you through your first couple of months there? Um, so there's or a boy... was everyone quite welcoming? Everyone was quite welcoming, yeah, but there's a boy who's on loan from Stoke who lives next door to me. Okay. He also played for England 20s. So he was taking me to training, going shopping with me, going to restaurants, stuff like that. So that really helped me settle in as well. Yeah, no, that's nice. And yeah, you, you spoke about a little bit the experience of obviously living by yourself. But maybe going into a bit more detail in that, like obviously you're a young man. 
how, how did it feel having to move away from home? And like you said, being four and a half hours away, it's not like you're you're down the road or up the road, half an hour away. You, you know that it's I can't come home anytime soon. So yeah. how, how was that like? It was difficult at first, but when I think about it, people my age are going to uni at the same time, so they're moving away from home as well. So I can't just I can't like think about it too much. People are going through worse. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, no, definitely. And and at that time, how how was your parents with you kind of going away? Was they were they supportive? Did they come and visit you quite often, or did they let you just get on with it and kind of go and experience the world? A bit of both, really. My dad used to come up like every few weeks. He'd stay over Saturday, Sunday night, where we have home matches. My mum only came up once, but my mum would always send food through my dad to bring up to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but cool. Yeah. So yeah, man. All right. So we're at Accrington, and and like you said, you've made fifteen appearances this season. Uh, what, what would I, what would I say? What, what has been like the toughest uh, test for you this season? Toughest test. You mean like match wise, or overall? yeah, could be could could be match wise, could be training, could just be in general. What's what's been your kind of toughest moments while you've been up there? Match-wise, we played Rotherham at home, who were top of the league. Um, went one nil down. <laughs> the winger that was on my side, so I was playing left back. I wasn't even playing centre back. Okay. You, so you know when you're playing left back, it's so much running. And the <laughs> players, fast wingers. <laughs> so the winger that was on my side first half, I was I was more or less handling him. So they switched, and the winger that came to my side, oh my days, the quickest. <laughs> just got the ball one v one. Ran down. Oh my days! Uh, we ended up losing that game two one, but obviously they were top of the league. They're going for a promotion, and yeah. we're like first down. So it wasn't. It was a good performance, but just not the result. And how how is that transition? Obviously, being a young centre back, I know that it's hard to always get minutes in the middle. So obviously, they always try and put you full back, or even sometimes centre backs get pushed into the DM role and stuff like that. Yeah. How's it been kind of transitioning to left back at times and then playing centre back? And yeah, I was thinking about it the other day. I think I played as many games left back as centre back this season. Like, it is difficult for young centre backs to get the opportunity in the middle. So, being able to play on like in different positions is important to get minutes. Yeah, and then no. once get in the team, then you can play the position that you're better at or that you want. But I think. I'm all right on the ball, so left back wasn't too difficult. But it's just the fitness side, not running yeah, with a lot, a lot of runnings involved. Left back. <laughs> but yeah, cool, bro. So yeah, in terms of your future now, um, what what's your kind of what do you want to achieve? What what do you want going forwards? Um, obviously, we don't know how this season's going to end uh, in terms of if we're going to carry on playing or if it's done. But yeah, future wise, in terms of West Ham or maybe another loan move. What would you like? Honestly, I don't know at this point. Obviously, um, wait to see what happens with the Corona staff and then potentially another move next, a loan move next season, get more minutes and then just see how it goes from there. Yeah, so, and to add on that, when football's said and done for you, what would you have liked to have uh, achieved? As much as possible. As many, as many appearances, as many trophies if possible do you know what I mean yeah no definitely like make, make a name for myself out there yeah no 100% and with that um, maybe just talk to obviously I've got a, a lot of young aspiring footballers that might be in here just listening and, and taking on the, the things you're saying maybe give some advice on maybe how they could or what what things they could put into place that might help them um all, all I'd say is that just always enjoy it when you're playing football. If you enjoy it, you play better. I always find that with myself. If I'm like nervous about a game or I'm thinking too much, just relax and try and enjoy it and you'll play better. That's, that's the only advice I can give. Yeah, and maybe um, for your academy time, would, would there be a piece of advice that you would give Academy players that might be in the system from maybe eight to all the way up to sixteen, eighteen, that sort of age. Uh, I'd say just listen to your coaches first and foremost because they're there to help you. They're not against you because you do see players that are like 
don't listen to the coaches and just work your hardest at all times. That's it. Yeah, no, for sure, bro. But yeah, uh, moving on. So in terms of idols and people that you looked up to, uh, did you have anyone on and off the pitch who you kind of looked up to and, yeah, inspired you? Uh, Varane and Ramos, them two together at Madrid. I've always that, loved them. That, that partnerships, yeah. That part, yeah, no, definitely. I think I think that's a that's a big partnership, and I don't think they get the credit they deserve, if that makes sense. Together, together. I think yeah. individually they do, but as a partnership, they haven't. Uh, so yeah, now that's a big one, and maybe off the pitch, anyone that kind of you look up to or inspires you. My family, really. My parents just taking me to training matches when I was young, especially my dad, like driving down to like Southampton and stuff like that. It's like. He didn't have to do that. But, I think but, I think that's big as well. A lot of people, they they want to be that academy player and they want to play at that level, but they don't understand the commitment. The commitment is very yeah. high. Like parents driving across the country three, four hours away on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning. Yeah. Like people don't understand that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's a big deal. So now props props to the parents that are doing it because it's a very hard job. Uh, but yeah, as well, during obviously the, the whole situation we're in, what kind of things uh, have you been doing to stay fit or have the club sort of provided you a schedule and stuff like that? Yeah, there's West Ham have sent a schedule for us to do like um, running work, ball work, uh, strength as well. So I've just been doing that and then like throwing in my own little stuff like skipping and, and bike work. So I've been trying to stay fit, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. Um for me, I'd say that, obviously, it hasn't been as long as some of the others. But, again, everyone's journey is different. But if anyone has any questions, maybe you could just pop some up uh, that we could ask you that, that are obviously appropriate. But if not, bro, from me, it's going to be a big thank you for jumping on and, and just shedding some light on your journey and, and all the things you're doing currently. So that's, that's a big thank you from me. But, yeah... Um, Everyone, thank you that for the people that have been watching because obviously you don't have to take your time to do this. Uh, thank you again, Edge, because you don't have to do this. And yeah, thank I'd you. like to just say thank you. And tomorrow we've got a double header. We've got Carl and Grant, who obviously was meant to come on on Friday, but had a situation. So we're gonna we're gonna sort him out tomorrow afternoon at two p.m. And then we've got in the uh, evening we've got Tristan Abrams from. Newport County coming on at six. So, no, I think those two will be two good ones as well. But there's a question here and it says, uh, maybe what are the differences between League One and the Prem? So, obviously, maybe talk about West Ham and the training and maybe the training at, obviously, Accrington. Uh, the difference, the training at Accrington is... The, the training at West Ham, I'd say, is a lot more structured than Accrington. Like, if you go to West Ham's training, like, everything's set out. You have your schedules, you get in breakfast, prep, train, gym, go home. Whereas Accrington, it's a bit more like you go in and then you find out what you're doing. When you get there, you, someone just shouts our meeting and then you go in for a meeting. Yeah. Uh, Facilities-wise, West Ham's top. And I think Accrington's just a bit behind, but they're getting there as so. well. Yeah, no, definite. Um, but, yeah, bro. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say well done and thank you for, for obviously taking your time. And we'll leave it there, bro. But everyone, see you tomorrow if you want to tune in for Carlin and for Tristan. All right? So I'll see everyone tomorrow. But big thanks, Andrew.